This is The Locker Room on News 3. Hey, happy Friday, everybody. Hard to believe we're already recapping week nine of the high school football season. Thanks so much for joining us tonight on The Locker Room. We are bouncing all around the area this evening, but let's start in the peninsula. Phoebus, perfect with three weeks to go in the regular season, but Woodside looking to take down the kings of the peninsula district. News 3, Zach Staten spending his evening at Darling Stadium. And Zach, another statement for the Phantoms tonight. Mark, just to give you a little bit of perspective of how dominant Phoebus has been, they've allowed six points in seven games here in 2022. The reigning state champs barreling through the peninsula. Woodside has other ideas, though. It's 6-1 and one trying to knock off the champs for the first time this season and show they belong in the title fight. That's the point. So can Woodside... Can Woodside find a way past Phoebus, the juggernaut tonight? The first 15 seconds, super promising for the visitors. Isaiah Hayes takes the opening kickoff for the, se for the second straight week. Our 757 showdown begins with a return for a touchdown, 90 yards to the house, and the Wolverines open up leading seven to nothing. Just the second team to score on Phoebus at all this season. But that woke up the Phantoms. They tie it up in the second quarter. Then Jordan Bass, the Pittsburgh commit, turns and sees a sea of defenders, runs it all the way back across the field, cuts back and still finds his way in for a score. It was 40 yards, more like 90 with going across the field. It's 14 to seven. Then the next drive home team gets right back to work. Tyreon Taylor plows over a defender, makes it 21 seven going to the break. Third quarter might be the play of the game here. Nolan James will escape a little bit of pressure. Decides he's gonna go for it all. Look at this, escapes the pressure and says, Hey man, Keontae Gray's down there somewhere. And you know what? Rewarded for it. All alone for the touchdown after the opening score. Phoebus scores 41 unanswered and rolls to an eight straight win, 41 to seven. We had to come here and show that we had to show dominance, that we had that we had full control of this game. After that kickoff, they, of course they had momentum. So we already knew we had to shut that down. That seven points taught us a lot. They taught us that at, through adversity, we can stick together and we can push through through anything. It was one of those situations where we were like, hey, they're here to play. They have nothing to lose, and they are here to play. So the guys just kind of all looked at each other and said, hey, reel it in, step by step, read your keys, and make plays. Now with the win, Phoebus officially claiming the Peninsula District Championship its sixth straight title. The Phantoms play their road finale next week against Gloucester. Woodside looks for a bounce back, taking on Denby next Thursday. In studio, Zach Staten, News 3 Sports. All right, Zach, thanks so much there for that. So, meanwhile, only one setback on the schedule so far for Western Branch, a 14-7 thriller at Kings Fork a few weeks ago. Tonight, the Bruins visiting Deep Creek, their final opponent before next week's regular season finale showdown with Oscar Smith. The Hornets, meanwhile, looking to snap a two-game skid, pick it up in the third. 22-12 Bruins looking for more. Taquan Trotman going up top for Chris Fraser. That'll extend the lead to 28-12. Deep Creek has an answer though, and the spark comes from QB1. Brahan Cuffey keeping it in himself. He'll weave his way through the defense, in for the score. Hornets trim it to 28-20 after a two-point conversion. Ensuing kickoff, some trickery from Western Branch. The reverse goes to Paul Billups. He'll make his way up the field. Finally forced out there, would lead to a Bruin field goal to make it a two-possession game. And in the fourth, Western Branch slamming the door, courtesy of Shamik Blizzard. Watch him get himself out of trouble here, get to the sideline, pick up a block, and he's gone. 79 yards to the house, all Bruins from there. They down Deep Creek, 40 to 20. Well, still ahead, Oscar Smith returning home for another Southeastern District clash. We'll see how the Tigers handling Nansman River. That's right after this. Big thanks to the Warriors there for bringing us back in. Oscar Smith, meanwhile, making yet another statement last week against Kings Fork, pulling away from the Bulldogs in the second half. Tonight, Tigers back home with a chance to win their 29th straight game over a Virginia opponent. Tigers playing host to Nansman River tonight on senior night. Pick it up first quarter. Caden Cox swings it to Xavier Lewis here. He'll turn on the Jets. Lewis called out at the three-yard line, but has the Tigers in good shape there, and it leads to this on the next play. Jamari Knox caps it off the drive here. Three-yard score, 7-0 Oscar Smith. Second quarter now. Cox going to the air. Puts it where only Isaiah Akers can get to it. Akers doing the rest. Gets the foot down. That's a score, 14-0. 
14-3 now and the ground game makes an explosive play. Isaac Huffman gets free. He's gone. 45-yard race to Pater. Tigers stay perfect. They down the Warriors 28-3. Lake Taylor has been rolling, heading to Manor looking for another district win. Titans already up big in the second quarter, looking for more. Check out Elijah Washington here. He'll use his height to make this catch, then takes it the rest of the way for the score. 39-0 Lake Taylor. Defense looking good all night as well. Roy Norfleet, quick into the backfield, stops the tailback in his tracks. No issues for Lake Taylor tonight. Titans go to 7-1 with the shutout road victory. They'll visit Granby next week. Let's head to Williamsburg, homecoming at Bruton, welcoming Pocosin. Islander is up in the third and looking to march to more. Mason McGavern gets Pocosin into the better field position here. Coming right into your living room there. Then Chase Bullard goes to work, gets into the secondary, makes some moves. Watch this here. Going to leap over a defender there. Whoop! Cuts back inside, goes towards the end zone, but pulled down at the five-yard line. Next play, though, Bullard will finish the job, gets in for six. The Bull Islanders are going to spoil Bruton's homecoming. They win this one 48 to 7. How about across town? Lafayette facing Jamestown. Always good environments there in the Bay Rivers. First quarter, Demarcus Lawrence gets the Rams on the board. Short score here, 7 0. Then the trickery reverse ends up with Jalen Pretlau. He'll take it 20 yards and maneuver into the end zone there. Gives Lafayette a 14 0 lead. Still in the first. The pass goes out to Pretlau now, and he'll get the chance to show off the wheels again. Takes it down the sideline, 40-yard score. Rams take a three-touchdown lead. Then it's James Spencer. He'll get in on the action. This a 15-yard score. Lafayette wins its seven straight in lopsided fashion over Jamestown. Well, coming up, from the field to the ice, the Norfolk Admirals drop the puck on their season. That's coming up right after this. Phoebus Band bringing us back in. Meanwhile, big night for hockey fans in Hampton Roads as the Norfolk Admirals dropping the puck on their season. The ads welcoming the South Carolina Stingrays to the scope to get things going in front of an energetic crowd here. The visitors would spoil Norfolk's opener as the Stingrays earn the 5-2 win, but the Admirals get right back at it tomorrow on the road in a rematch. The ads return to the scope a week from tonight when they host Maine. We're going to bring you some more high school football scores when we return right after this. All right, let's take a look around the area. Kellum holds off Landstown in the beach where Bayside wins big over at Ocean Lakes to start a winning streak here. Cox continues to roll, shutting out First Colonial while Heritage gets by Hampton in a Peninsula District battle. Kings Fork bouncing back from last week's loss to Oscar Smith. Indian River pitching a shutout, topping Great Bridge. And Zach Staten joins us now again. And Zach, we have a, a big one coming up here next week. Yeah. Oscar Smith, Western Branch in Chesapeake. Good battle in Class 6. And we've already seen Western Branch has lost just one game this year. That was the Kings Fork, 14-7 on the road. They've got a UNC commit in Paul Billups. We already know the, the pedigree of Oscar Smith. They've won 29 games in a row against Virginia opponents. We saw what happened last week. They got down to Kings Fork, and it didn't take them but a minute to respond and then immediately pull away. So that's a test of who's going to be able to outlast somebody else because Western Branch can really throw the ball. Oscar Smith really outlast teams. That one's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Tigers beat the Bruins twice last year, once in the regional playoffs, so you know the regional finals, actually, so you know the uh, Bruins have a little bit of a sour taste. And this is interesting because we're getting right down to that nitty-gritty part of the season Yep. You want to start getting ready for postseason time, but this is an important game to win, too. It's like fine-tuning, but you also got to be perfect in this one. It's going to be fun. No doubt. We'll be a follow next week. That wraps up tonight's locker room. If you join us late, see it all on WTKR.com. For Zach Staten, I'm Mark Davis. Have a great weekend, everybody. <laughs>